Welcome to the Daily Brief, where I'll go over the action in the market for Thursday, February 2nd, and then we'll see how things look for Friday, February 3rd. We had another solid up day. In fact, the market is kind of getting a bit giddy at this point. It seems like, oh, we're just going up. Everything's wonderful. No matter what news is coming out, we can turn it around and make it positive. A lot of times when that happens, it signals some kind of a short-term top. Often, it's even longer than that. But first of all, we start with the short-term and then see if it bleeds over into the intermediate and long-term. Now, we still may have some ways to go on the upside. But historically speaking, we have kind of a negative day coming. Friday, when you get to the Stock Traders Almanac, it's pretty down overall. So we'll look at those things and talk about what happens. But right now, let's go back and talk about what did happen. Right at the open, we had a gap higher open. We were above 41.50, and prices were able to climb above R1 at 41.66. As the day went on, prices stayed above R1 and attempted to move higher, but sellers then came into the market and took prices back down to 41.50. Later on, prices rebounded back up to close above R1. We were up 1.47%. Volume was above average. We are seeing a pickup in volume, and that is positive. As we're going up, more people are like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be left behind. I better get in now. They're jumping in, generating a lot more volume, which is also producing some more conviction. Our technicals are positive, but we're getting quite overbought now, and I have a number of charts to show you. Inflation and interest rates, now it seems to be that those things are taming down a little bit. Who knows? After Friday, next week, it could be doom and gloom again. But for right now, the market tends to be looking at things more positive. We also have the geopolitical concerns that are happening. We just want to keep an eye on that. Earnings are still coming out. We have a lot of companies that are reporting. The debt ceiling hasn't been really dealt with yet. And I'm also watching the situation in India. I talked about this yesterday where I think he's like the third richest person in the world, lives in India, has a lot of stock there, and a number of companies that he has are massively losing a lot of value. We really pay attention to that more to see, is that going to bleed over into the U.S. and cause some kind of a problem here? So far, it seems to be isolated to India, and it may stay that way, but we just want to keep an eye on that. Here's the intraday chart where we gapped up, had a little bit of a pullback, didn't really fill the gap before going up above R1. That became support. Once we got above R1, we came back down. We tried to go up higher, but this is when some selling came into the market. Took us back down below R1, all the way down to the 4150 level, before having a fairly nice bounce going into the close. What are some comments that we can make? The current scenario is that the earnings growth in monetary policy may be better than feared. That's kind of what the market is dealing with right now is... Okay, we've been negative for a lot of 2022, and we took that over into 2023. So now maybe things aren't as bad as what we thought they were. And then I say here, has the market become too giddy? We have to always watch out for that. Merck really kept the Dow negative in Thursday's session. That's why the Dow was down on the day where the other indexes were up. Growth underperformed value, just another little warning sign that we want to be aware of, and a good solid upward move we would see growth outperform value. That did not happen in Thursday's session. The NASDAQ and the NASDAQ 100 were very strong. They were led by Meta, which came out with an earnings report that was very well received, and that stock skyrocketed up. Semiconductors continue to do well. Energy is still under a bit of pressure, even though it was up in Thursday's session. Over 100 companies have been reporting earnings as this week unfolds. The VIX was up on an update, kind of a strange thing, just something to make note of. On a short-term basis, we have the moving average study that's becoming a little extreme. Not really bad, but something just to look at. The rate of change going back 10 and 20 periods is also looking extreme, as are the stochastics. A new addition to the list is the force index, and then the usual indicators that we have, the Stoke RSI and the Williams Percent R. All of those are extreme positive right now. Our list in the intermediate term is becoming a little bit longer with the CCI 14 and 20. Those have been on there the last few days. We also have the Chaikin Oscillator, the Percent B Indicator, as well as the RSI based on nine periods. And then longer term, we still have that moving average study that's becoming a little bit more extreme. The dollar was up and interest rates were virtually unchanged in Thursday's session. Copper has been coming down a little bit lately, but it's still holding on to the majority of its gains. 
The 10 to the 5, the 10 to the 2, the 10 to the 3 months, those yield curves remain inverted. Sentiment is still positive and not necessarily extreme right now. We're getting close, but we're giving a reading right now of 72. I'll talk about the economic reports on the next slide. Our trend is positive and getting stronger, but it's still below 20. The ADX is coming up. We're not getting that far away from 20 now, so we could be getting into a trending environment. The thing to be aware of is we've been trendless as we've been going up. About the time we hit a trend could be when we hit a major overbought condition and the market turns and goes the other direction. That could then bring the ADX back down. Not saying that that's what will happen, but if things unfold that way, that's how things could develop. Our bias is positive, as is our momentum. The economic reports. We had weekly jobless claims. They expected them to come in at 201,000. They came in at 183,000. Last week, they were at 186,000. Fourth quarter productivity, the preliminary reading, came in at 3%. They expected it 2.5%, so that's actually positive to see productivity up. That means companies are doing better. They're producing more and being more efficient. The last time we had this report, it was at 1.4%. The labor costs, those were not up as much as they thought. It came in at 1.1%. They expected it to be up 1.5%. Last time, it was at 2%. Factory orders were at 1.8%. They expected it to be at 2.2%. Last time they were down 1.9%. This is the ISM manufacturing report showing how it's been declining. That's the blue line where the S&P has been going up. We're starting to see a bit of a disconnect here. Usually they have a tendency to go in the same general direction. What's going to give? Is ISM going to turn and go back up or is the S&P going to turn and come down? Just something to be aware of. Here's another interesting tweet that I found. This just applies to the situation in the market as of Thursday, February 2nd, where it says the current situation. The NASDAQ is up 3% while the Dow is down 100 points. That was mainly due to Merck really dragging down the Dow. The VIX is at a new low like we're in a bull market. Bonds are up sharply like we're in a recession. Gold is down like higher rates are coming. Crude oil is up like we avoided a recession. Mixed signals everywhere, and that's kind of the confusing factor that's happening right now. That's why I look at a lot of different charts to reach a consensus, because we are getting some mixed signals, but we can still get a pretty good grasp on what's happening. Here are the weekly jobless claims showing how they have been declining, and here are the continuing unemployment claims right up and still just about on top of the moving average. The weekly American Association of Individual Investors came out with their survey after being extreme negative for a lot of 2022. We're coming up. They're still under zero, so they slant more negative, but they are showing some improvement. Where we really use this survey is when we're getting extreme negative or extreme positive, but because we spent most of 2022 down below this 20 line, it was really hard to get a gauge on that because it when we started to look at this extreme negative reading and then act off of it, well, the market would bounce up and then just stall. We don't really pay as much of attention to it now when it's not giving us an extreme reading, but we still like to look at this nonetheless. Here is just a screenshot that I took showing how value is really outperforming growth, where value was up 1.78% versus 1.18%. They were both up, but value is outperforming. Also in the mid caps and also in the small caps, value outperformed in Thursday's session. Our equity put call ratio going back five periods, looking at the moving average where we spiked up and are coming down, that looks like it has been giving some support to the S&P 500. The ulcer index, just like the VIX, just like sentiment is still suggesting that fear is rather low. Here is the VIX, we're well down below 20, and it actually turned up on a closing basis on an up day, but we're still getting a pretty complacent reading on the line chart as well as on the bar chart. Here's the VIX of the VIX, where it's spiking back up a little bit, so there could be a little volatility starting to come back into the VIX. Our ADX shows that we're getting up close to that 20 level. We're well above the moving average, and the green line is on top, so we default to positive. But as long as we're below this 20 mark, we consider that to be trendless. If you're rather aggressive with this indicator, then you might have gone long when we crossed above the moving average. The Arun shows that 
buyers are really in control right now. Sellers are decreasing. Our overall oscillator is getting a little bit toppy right now. So this might be one source of an overbought condition. The daily chart shows us where we were able to get above the December highs. We did that yesterday. Well, today we were able to get above that even further and we're starting to deal with some longer term resistance which had been support when we were coming down but now is acting as resistance as we're going back up here's the longer term look going back two years with that same chart I'm going back to the high set last spring where we're bumping into those levels again can we get above that or is this gonna act as resistance before we start to turn down or are we gonna chop sideways for a while we're seeing a golden cross here with the S&P 500. The 50 is just getting ready to go across the 200. We're well above this trend line. That's positive. We've broken through a lot of up resistance so far. So things are looking a lot better, but we've been going up awful fast here. At the bottom, you can see where volume really expanded. The Vorse Index, we're starting to go up a little too far too fast. We're hitting the upper side of this Keltner band, and that usually sig signals that we're overbought. Our moving average study actually turned down a little bit with the 20 and the 50 after getting just close to being extreme. Our 200 moving average is still going higher and just starting to get into extreme positive territory. Stochastics, across the board, we are extreme positive with the short term, intermediate term, and the long term. Our slope starting to turn back up, so that's showing some improvement. The rate of change going back 10 periods looking extreme positive. Our Stoke RSI and our Williams percent are also extreme positive. Our PMO study turned down a little bit with the PMOs that are rising. Is there a little bit of internal weakness that's starting to develop? Just a question to ponder. We're still going higher with the number of buy signals and we're flat to a little bit extreme with the percent of PMOs that are above zero. The BPI starting to get a little extreme now. This has been going up and doing quite well. It's still positive overall. The momentum is still up, but are we getting to that level where we might top out and start to go back down? Here's the NYSE bullish percent index also showing that it has been breaking out as the market has been going up this past week. Chicken money flow still looking pretty positive. The CCI 14 and the CCI 20 are extreme positive. Here's the CMB composite index. We're starting to get above this upper band. This is positive right now, but we could be getting a little toppy. TTM squeeze, also looking more positive with the shaded blue bars and they continue to advance. The rate of change going back 20 periods. This is more intermediate term. It's starting to get extreme positive. Volume has been really breaking out. And that's rather encouraging. The short term FIB levels we've got above this 100% retracement going back to the September highs. Now we're kind of in no man's land and we have quite a ways to go to get back up to the 4325 level. Longer term, we have some overhead resistance at the 4213 level. That's this green line here. Want to keep an eye open for that if we continue to advance. The Swindland Trading Oscillator based on price and volume continue to advance, so they're positive. Moving average tree, getting further away from all of the moving averages. So we're seeing a lot of these shorter term moving averages start to turn up and even themselves out. The Elder Impulse system for the S&P 500 continues to be positive with a green bar. The summation index based on price and volume are both positive and not necessarily getting extreme. Although we're getting a little bit close based on volume, we're not seeing a real extreme reading based on price. We're coming back to test the November highs that were set in this indicator. The Sean trend meter is starting to get extreme positive. Chicken oscillator getting extreme positive. We have a new X drawn on the point and figure chart and a new signal which was generated after Thursday. That's a triple top breakout. That's considered to be positive. The boom indicator, this measures how far are we away from the 50 and 200 day moving averages. We're getting extreme with the 50. We are looking more positive with the 200 and have a ways to go to get toppy there. The percent B indicator, starting to get extreme. We're hitting the upper side of the Bollinger Band and actually penetrating that. And that's when a signal is generated. 
RSI 14 still looking positive the RSA 9 is starting to look a little extreme new highs new lows we finally saw a bit of a breakout with the new highs that's helping our 5 period to turn back up and our 10 period to go slightly higher advanced decline line still looking pretty good we're above the moving average in advancing both based on price and volume the copic curve since we're continuing to go back up now it's rolling back up so this is just confirming the buy signal that we had way back at the beginning of January our longer term moving average study with the 150 and 200 starting to get a little extreme positive the Nasdaq just breaking above its 200 day moving average breaking above this R1 pivot level so that's really showing a lot of improvement as is the Nasdaq 100 here's the elder impulse for the Nasdaq 100 showing that we are green the home builders where we're breaking out with the S&P 500 we're starting to really go up with the home builders ETF the ratio is going up and they're having a tendency to go in the same direction so that bodes well for a real healthy environment we look at this and take action when we see a divergence we're not seeing a negative divergence we're seeing a positive convergence right now semiconductors giving us a recent golden cross and just shooting up 2.32 percent the diamonds switch back to neutral it was down in Thursday's session with all the other indexes being up so it's switched back now small caps really going up after a recent golden cross broke through this R1 level and the small cap ratio to the S&P is really going up which is helping this red chart to go up which often gives support to the S&P mid caps also had a good day but possibly hit resistance at this R1 level the high beta stocks are just shooting up these are the big companies that a lot of folks like to get into and they're what everybody talks about the Google the Apple the Tesla a lot of those companies they're really outperforming right now so that is more of a risk on environment and is positive for the market looking at the bonds going back to three to seven month maturities compared to the investment grade bonds just showing how fear is really starting to decrease that kind of goes hand in hand with what we're seeing in the VIX and also with what we're seeing with the ulcer index looking at some of our possible positive scenarios we're getting a little bit extreme with the 19 day exponential moving average of the advanced decline line ratio it's getting extreme with the volume we still have a ways to go based on price sector rotation the cues to the S&P really going up nicely discretionary to the S&P going up and large cap growth is pace outpacing large cap value we're looking at just growth in value we see the large caps going up the mid caps going up kind of a little tiny breakout here with the small cap ratio looking at the 50 period exponential moving average of the highs minus the lows we're still up here in what could be a new blue area and that often gives some real support to the market Here's that same chart just showing these other shaded areas and how we've been really performing well as of late. The NYSE breadth thrust, we're still working off of a signal that was generated last October and we've been going up since then. If you look over on the right, thanks to Shivako Capital, we have a perfect track record shooting out one, two to three years when we work off of a signal such as this. Looking at the staples, the S&P 500 ratio, it's really continuing to go down and that has been providing a lot of support for the S&P 500 so the more we leave this in the rearview mirror the more this is really looking like a valid signal where we had been faked out a number of times in 2022 another thing I haven't brought up in a while is the S&P 500 to the utilities ratio when this ratio is going up the market is tending to go up when this turns and starts to go down that often marks a top in the S&P We've been bouncing around throughout late 2022 and into early 2023 where we're starting to break out to the upside here can that continue so what's our outlook then for friday the technicals are still positive we're above that long-term resistance i'm really counting that trend line it played such a huge role and until we can close out well above that on a weekly basis i'm still kind of keeping that in the spotlight we are becoming more short and intermediate term overbought. We have the employment situation report coming out. That's going to be big this month. The IHS Market Manufacturing Services PMI will be coming out. And the ISM Non-Manufacturing Index, that's another big report. 
The whole list of geopolitical events. Is the debt ceiling going to get dealt with? Is more information going to come out of India? We're just kind of watching those things right now. Any more Fed speak that we may get? Looking at things for the Stock Traders Almanac for Friday, February 3rd, we have a pretty negative seasonal day here. The Dow is up a little more than half the time, so that's neutral to positive slightly. But the S&P, it's only up 42.9% of the time. That's negative. And the NASDAQ is even worse than that at being up only 33 and a third percent of the time. And the NASDAQ is only up 33 and a third percent of the time. We still have kind of a positive slant. When you go back the last 73 years, we're up 55% of the time. We're down 45% of the time for the entire month. Yearly, we're still working off of this 3.0 trifecta. That'll be good now for the rest of the year. And the market still likes that we're split between Republican and Democrat. Our scenarios can't really go with the down one. We're pretty positive right now, unless you're really focused on the fact that we're overbought right now and you want to play that side. But that totally goes against what our charts are saying. Can't really go with the upside because we're not trending yet. We are looking a little bit better. And if we can really move up more, the ADX may confirm some kind of a trend. So we still are going with the sideways trend because the ADX is getting stronger, but it's still below 20. The green line's on top, so it is positive. Our conclusion, the S&P is positive. We're above that trend line, but we're becoming more and more overbought. Short term, positive but overbought. Intermediate term, positive but overbought. Long term, we're getting ready to see what could be a golden cross. That's quite positive, and we're still above the 200-day simple moving average. Thank you. Have a wonderful day on Friday. I'll look at preparing the weekly video, the intermarket analysis video, and the deep dive video over the weekend.